Hi, everybody. How are you? Oh, my gosh. You guys, I've missed you so much. <laughs> I feel like it has been forever since I have done a live. And honestly, I think I've forgotten how to do this. <laughs> I definitely haven't forgotten how to talk because we all know that I could talk to a rock, but it's been a minute since I've done a Facebook live and a YouTube live. So yeah, I'm a little rusty. I'm a little rusty. Janelle says she's back. Oh my gosh. I missed you guys so much. You just don't even know. You just don't even know. I missed you so, so much. It is so good to be back. It is so good to see all of you. Oh my gosh, look, there's everybody. <laughs> I'm so excited. There's Jana and Jamie and Brenda and Stacia and Linda and Karen and little Katie, Donna. <laughs> Katie, I don't know why I said it like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just excited. Can you tell? I'm excited. But guys, I got to tell you, life is hard, right? Life is hard. I, I'm not telling you guys any like earth shattering <laughs> news. Everybody knows life is hard, but I got to tell you guys, my, my year so far has just been kind of crap. <laughs> just being honest with you. Like this year has just been, ugh, and it just, I don't know. It just does not seem to be getting any better. So I need lots and lots of good vibes and prayers and love and anybody else out there who needs them. I'm going to send you some your way too. I got to tell you, I was fortunate in that my youngest um, did not get super, super sick. Guys, I'm going to refrain from saying the C word. We all know what she had because I posted it. But Facebook does this really stupid thing that if you say the C word like it's some sort of cuss word, um, then they flag you. So I'm not going to say, but everybody knows what she was sick with. Fortunately, being that she was young, um, she came through it with flying colors. In fact, she is going to be going back to school very, very soon. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't seem to be the only thing in my life, right? So my son has it now. So it went from my youngest child to my oldest child. So my 19 year old, he's asleep in the room next to me. He goes this afternoon to get his test, which we all know is going to be positive because his symptoms are exactly the same. Um, however, he sounds a lot worse than she does. And I would imagine it's because he's older. So I'm not, I'm not out of the woods just yet, but uh, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I don't have to monitor him as closely. Of course, I'm concerned and being the mom and like checking on him constantly. Um, but with my youngest, she had uh, she has asthma and really bad allergies. So I was I was really monitoring her. In fact, I had brought a um, a blow up mattress in here <laughs> in my office so she could lay in the floor in here while I worked. Um because I was like that diligently like checking on her. She was really over it too. By about the third day, she was like, okay, mom, please leave me alone. Can I go to my room? <laughs> um, but yeah, so you guys, I just want it to go away. And I know that you guys want it to go away as well. If your family has been touched by it, your friends have been touched by it. You yourself have been touched, you know, like you want it to go away. So uh, let's just all collectively uh, say that we're going to do better as a society. <laughs> we're going to wash our hands, right? And we're not going to breathe on each other, okay? Oh, so that's my update. That's my update. I just, I just want it to go away. I know so many of you are feeling that way as well. It just kind of stinks because I feel like last year, I worked so hard to protect my family. Like I was obsessive about it. And this year I'm still obsessive about it, but even against my best efforts, I could not protect my family from this. And it's frustrating. So enough about that. I just wanted to update you guys because I know a lot of you out there um, have been sending me well wishes and prayers and thoughts and checking in on me. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate that. You have no idea. Um, it is already a volatile situation inside my house because, you know, my soon to be ex-husband won't leave and he still lives here. So uh, it's a weird situation. And then to have family sick in the house, too, it's just 
this year could just not go away soon enough. That's all I gotta say. All right, so because I've missed you, because I've missed you, um, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate everybody continuing with the community. Like the world doesn't stop without me, which I know is true. Uh, but I'm so happy that we have new people coming in. That's one thing I really got to kind of monitor over the week that I was gone last week is to see like new faces that are coming into the group. And so what I want from all of you guys, and I know you guys are amazing at this, but please welcome in Welcome in all of the new faces and the new people. If you are from YouTube, you guys, I want that community to grow as well. So start making some friends over there, you guys. If you're here on Facebook, welcome in the new people. I want, um, you know, I want everybody to continue to share the love and inspiration with each other and to build each other up. You guys do a wonderful job of that. So uh, thank you for doing that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, anything else? Let's see. So because I didn't do last week, we didn't get a chance to do our project with Sam. Sam is not going to be here today, but I'm still going to do the project that we were going to do with Sam. And of course you will be seeing, uh, Sam again soon. I mean, it's not like he's going to be a stranger. Uh, uh, speaking of Sam, thank you all to those of you who made it to Sam's Labor Day sale last night. It was a blast. Like he had some really great items on sale. I bought all kinds of stuff. Can't wait to put them in kits. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Um, so we're going to do the earrings project that we uh, originally were going to do. We're just going to do it without Sam. But I want to show it to you. And then I'm going to, I just made an executive decision here at the last minute. that I'm going to change the way we do this. Uh, I don't like the original design. And so when I got up this morning, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it different. So that's what we're going to do. We're kind of designing on the fly. Not really. Um, I, I still know what I'm doing. <laughs> sure <laughs> but um yeah wendy says she spent way too much me too me, me too <laughs> cheryl says she's supposed to be working we won't tell on you patty says sam is not good for my b budget same <laughs> same i was being so good like i didn't buy anything last week and sam has a sale and i'm like here just take my money take my money <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn you guys around and let's get to this, shall we? All right. So let's talk about our design. Hi, Shirley. Okay, so let me show you what the original looked like. And it's still a great design, but I, I don't know. It's something about it was just making me mad. So, <laughs> so I've decided because I can that I'm going to change it because it's my design and I can do that, right? Okay, so this was the original. And these beautiful beads were part of Sam's August bead box. For those of you who got it, you've got these great beads. For those of you who don't know about Sam's bead box, please go check him out and sign up for his monthly subscription service because his beads are amazing. And these were just some of the beautiful purples that were in his August box, as well as the flower. The flower was part of that as well. Okay, so Here's the design, but I don't know. There's something about this that has just really, really rubbed me the wrong way. And I think it's because I'm such a perfectionist. This whole teardrop shape, I'm just not happy with it. I just don't like it. I feel like it's lopsided. It just, I don't know. I'm just not a fan. The wrapped loop part of it, I don't like any of that. So we're going to change this entire thing. I'm still going to make a teardrop. I'm just going to show you a better way to make a teardrop because this one just doesn't do it for me. We're still going to do all of the wire wraps, little loops here. We're still going to keep the same shape and the same beads, but the component itself, I'm just not happy with it. So let's do, let's do better. Let's do better. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So the component itself is made out of 18 gauge German style wire. We're still going to use 18 gauge German style wire for the component, um, but we're going to, we're just going to, we're going to do better. We're going to do better. So let me show you what we're going to do. I've got my 18 gauge wire here and I'm going to use my ruler, which is something that I very rarely do. You guys know I don't number very well. So I'm going to, I'm going to use my ruler for this and I'm going to trim this piece of wire down. In fact, I don't even think 
that in the materials list, I gave like actual measurements for things. Like that's how out of it I was when I put this together. I was so stressed out, you guys. I'm still stressed, but I'm managing it much better now. <laughs> okay. So I have my piece of 18 gauge wire. I'm going to lay that onto my ruler and I'm going to cut it right at the five inch mark, which I know is kind of hard to see because there's, there's tape over it, but I'm going to cut this at the five inch mark. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers. Okay. Since we've got an exact five inch piece, I want to come to the middle. And so I'm going to come to that two and a half inch mark and I'm going to put my pliers on that two and a half mark, two and a half inch mark. I'm going to lower you down a little bit. Nicole. All right. I'm going to put my pliers next to, okay, because if I use my pliers to make a bend right there, it's going to be off by just a smidgen. So I don't know if you can tell or not, my pliers are grabbing that wire directly to the side of that two and a half inch mark. Okay. And I'm going to make a bend. That's going to make it even on both sides. So when you grab it, grab it right here next to that, that mark, right? In that little tiny space right there. Don't grab it on the exact mark, just to the side. And it doesn't have to be to the right. It can be to the left. It makes no difference. But you got to allow for the room of the tip of your pliers in order to keep both sides of your wire uh, even, right? Because if you don't, you're going to be off by just a little bit. Now what I like to do is I like to come in and I just kind of squeeze on the wire. I know it seems weird, but on either side of the bend, if you just kind of bite down on the wire a little bit, it helps to kind of sharpen up that bend a little bit, okay? I'm also going to squeeze and make it a nice, a nice V. Now what I want to do is totally different than what we originally did. I'm not going to do a wrapped loop. I'm just not. I think that's what distorted the entire component. And I think that's why I just didn't like it. So instead of doing it that way, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our small bell making pliers. I'm done with the ruler. Okay. I'm going to take my small bell making pliers and I'm going to make a loop on either end. And I'm going to use the smallest portion of the tool to make a loop. So I'm going to grab the wire at the end and I want to roll this loop to the back. So I'm rolling the loop away from me. So when you're looking straight on to the wire, you don't see the loop necessarily, right? When you turn it to the side, you can see it. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side. So I'm just going to grab the wire and I'm going to turn a loop to the back. Okay. So now I have a V with two loops on either end. I'm going to bring in my artistic wire mandrel tool and I'm going to place this onto the tool, but you can see how that V, right? It's going to sit away from the surface of the tool, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to take the, the two ends of the wire and I'm going to kind of bend them around, right? And that's going to create the teardrop shape that I want. This is better. <laughs> I don't know. It just, for one thing, it's a little bit bigger, which I appreciate, but it's more consistent. I feel like this shape is just not quite right. This, on the other hand, is a shape that I can really get behind and excited about. So that's what I'm going to do. Dawn says, which one am I using? I'm using the bottom, these two last ones. So it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just kind of using that as just to, a guide to kind of guide my, you know, guide the, the edges around to make that round shape. And honestly, if you don't have the artistic wire mandrel tool, you can use anything that's round like that. Um, a prescription bottle, anything you've got, like just laying around will definitely work. I always go for prescription bottles because I figure if you guys are like me, I use my prescription bottles to put beads in, right? I'm not like, you know, <laughs> I'm not running a pharmacy or anything. I'm just, I'm just a recycler, if you will. Okay. 
So I like this shape so much better. I don't know. It just feels more consistent and more even than what we started out with. Yes, it is a little bit bigger. So if you want to make it smaller, just cut your wire a little bit smaller. Instead of going with five inches to create a component that is this big, go with maybe three and a half inches or four inches and make your component a little bit smaller. Okay. So now... I'm gonna, did I use the circle or the, oh, oh, I use the circle. I use the circle. I use the circle for almost everything. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and a couple of things with this. The first thing I'm going to do just to make sure that it stays consistent in that shape. I'm going to grab a jump ring here. So normally I don't attach a jump ring until the end, right? When I'm ready to do all the things <laughs> to finish the piece but i need this jump ring to go in between here to hold this shape because we need to work hard in it so i'm going to take a six millimeter jump ring i'm going to twist it to open it and i'm going to loop that through both of the loops and then i'm going to close that back now that's going to hold our shape a little bit better than if we just left it alone when we go to work harden. Because sometimes when you hit this with the hammer to work harden it, it distorts the shape a little bit. It also gives you an opportunity to kind of clean up your loops if they are, um, if they're showing at all. Okay. All right. So I... Yvonne says, I don't think I'm getting to see all the comments from everyone. Okay, first of all, welcome, Yvonne. <laughs> uh, second of all, if you are on uh, YouTube, which I see you've got the little YouTube, the YouTube comments, there's not nearly as many YouTube people, whereas the Facebook comments, there's a lot more Facebook people, and you guys can't see either one, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, so yeah, you're definitely seeing less comments. All right, I'm going to place this on my block. Notice I have put it on the block so that my loops are hanging off the edge so that my component is laying nice and flat on the block. I'm going to use my nylon hammer to work harden. This is just extra insurance to make sure that I'm going to maintain the shape while we are wire wrapping to it. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the back as well. Ah! <laughs> All right. That's a sign that we're done. <laughs> we're done. We're cardinal. When it goes flying across the room, you're good. Okay. So we've worked hardened a little bit. Didn't do a lot of work hardening, but you know, just a little extra insurance there. All right. So now again, I just want to compare the two so that you can see the difference. Yes. The shapes are very, very different, uh, but still kind of the same uh, in the sense that they come down to a point, which is what I was really going for. This one is more bubbly at the top. The wire wrapped loops are not sitting completely in the center. I think that's what bothered me the most. Whereas with this, clearly I have a center point, right? It's even on both sides. So I just prefer this one better. I feel like had I been thinking clearly about this project when I originally did it, I probably would have done it this way. But, you know, both of them work. I just kind of prefer this one. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create these same loops here. And this is something that we've actually done before, but we've never done it to a point here, right? We've never done it where the point comes down. We've always done it on like a curved or a flat surface. Uh, it doesn't change things much, but you do have to be a little bit more careful when you hold it with your pliers. Okay, so we're going to be using the small bell making pliers to create those loops and we're going to be using a piece of 24 gauge wire. I don't have a measurement on this, but I'm going to guess that about 12 inches is probably going to be plenty for this. I don't know why I didn't make the actual measurement. So I apologize for not telling you. I just was not just was not in a good place. All right. So I'm going to do 3 loops a loop in the center and three loops. That's going to give me a total of seven of the loops, but I don't add beads to all seven of those, but I do want it to, to keep it consistent um, because they are part of the design, right? So I'm going to take my wire 
and I'm going to anchor my wire to my component. So I'm just laying my wire, this 24 gauge wire across the component. I'm going to hold it down and I'm just going to take the tail end of it and wire wrap. And I'm going to wire wrap around about four times. Okay. And actually, I didn't go the way I wanted to with that wire. So what does that mean? I'm going to I'm going to show you what that means. So notice the direction. I just, I don't know. Notice how the wire is coming towards me. I really want the wire to be going away from me, which I can leave it just like this and do that. Um, but it's going to make my little wire wrap sit at an angle that I don't like. So because I'm really, really picky about this, I'm going to undo this. I know it seems silly to undo something like that, but whereas I could just as easily turn the whole thing over. But what I want is I want for my wire that I'm going to make my components with that to be the coming across this way. Does that, does that make any sense whatsoever? <laughs> I don't want that wire coming towards me. I want it going away from me. So I'm going to rewire wrap to attach this. Okay. That's just me being picky. <laughs> Peggy says, get it together. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Okay, there we go. Now the wire is going away from me. It's coming across the top, going away from me. Does that make better sense? It does to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's just me. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and trim off. It Honestly, it doesn't make that big of a difference, but you know, because I'm such a weirdo, I have to have it. I have to have it just so. Okay. So I trimmed off the tail and now I'm ready to make my little loops and I'm going to do three and my wire can still slide around on the component, which is exactly what I want until I get, um, down here or until I get to the loop that's going to go in the center, then we can really kind of slide everything down. Okay. So I'm not super worried. I'm going to take my bail making pliers. I'm going to grab the component right next to those wire wraps, right? Where my wire is coming up. I'm going to use the wire and go up and over the barrel of those pliers. So I'm just using the barrel of the, the bail making pliers as a guide, right? to form that, that half moon kind of U shape. And then still holding everything in place, I'm going to wire wrap about three times. Okay, so I'm making three wire wraps. I'm gonna come back around for the fourth. I know it's kind of hard for you to see, but I've still got it on the tool and everything, right? Okay. Guiding that wire. Dawn says, I have the multi-set. What size would that be? It would be, um, you can choose either one, the smallest or the, the next one up. I think either one of those is going to be perfect. Okay. So there's our first little loop, right? I'm going to come in again. So I'm grabbing with the bail making pliers again, right up against the last wire wraps that I made. I'm going, guiding the wire around it. Oh no, Catherine, we'll miss you, we'll miss you. I'm glad to be back too, and I'm glad you were here. <laughs> Thanks Yvonne, so glad you're here. I'm so glad everybody's here. I was afraid like you guys have forgotten about me. <laughs> like I was gone for a whole week. Well, if I come back and nobody's there, they've all moved on to somebody else. They don't like me anymore. Silly things I worry about. All right. So there are three more wire wraps, right? And notice I'm leaving it on the tool. That really kind of helps to stabilize everything. Okay. I'm going to slide it off. I'm going to put back on to the tool right up against those left. Don't leave any room in there. Okay. You want it to be as close to the last drive that you made as possible. Okay. I'm going to guide the wire around and again, just wrapping about three times. Now I do want to mention something 
let me go ahead and do these three wraps first and then I will talk about it because I forgot to mention this, but it'll be easier for you to see it once I remove the tool. Okay, so I've made my wire wrapped loops on the outside of my component. And again, I'm gonna slide those down. Remember how I told you it was important that we still had a little, a little movement in there so we could slide everything. Just slide very, very gently. You want your wire to be coming off to the side, not right at the center, just right off to the center, right off. <sighs> yeah, off center, just a tiny bit. <laughs> Words are hard today. Okay, that's what I'm going for. That's where I want to slide everything down. Now, what I didn't mention was <clears throat> when I was doing my wire wraps around the component, I continued to follow the natural path of the wire. Okay, so in other words, the wire was going away from me. Remember how I made it a big deal. It was important to me that it was coming across the top of the component and running away from me. So the natural path, even if we did not make this loop, would have been this, right? This kind of same movement. So the wire would go to the back and wrap around, right? So in other words, and it looks, you can definitely tell when I show it to you this, this way, okay? So I'm going from the front to the back, just like I would wrap if there wasn't loops. Does that make sense? So in other words, don't do the front and then come to the front on the other side of your loop. Unless you want that to be the look that you're going for. However, when you do that, it makes one of your loops on the front, your next loop on the back, your loop on the front. You see what I'm saying? So it makes them kind of, they're just kind of off kilter. Let me show you. Because I don't want anybody to get confused about this. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to take a scrap piece of wire and another scrap piece of wire here. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's just practice for a second. Okay. So I've wrapped around this scrap piece of wire and <clears throat> come in with my tool. Now I can go around, guide my wire around that component and come to the front, which is fine. Right. Albert, my goodness. Okay. But what happens is after I've done that, okay, see how this one's both wires are on the front. But what happens is my next loop, after I've made my three wraps, I'm ready to make my next loop. That loop's going to be coming from the back, right? So it would look like this. Wrap around real quick so you can see. It kind of just messes up the flow of your wire. See what I mean? So one of them is on the front. One of them is on the back, which you can squeeze them together, right? So that it, it's not that big of a deal. But the consistency is just not, it's just not the same. Do you see what I mean? Does that make sense? So for me, I definitely, um, yeah, it makes it cattywampus. <laughs> I agree. I, I just, I don't know. I just feel like my loops are more consistent when I follow the natural path of the wire. Uh, it doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't have that back and forth vibe. I'm just not a fan of that, but it's up to you however you want to do it. I'm just, I, I just like them all to be consistent with the, with the flow of the wire. I don't want to disturb the flow. <laughs> okay. So now we're down here to the center and we're ready to make our little loop here, but we're doing it over a bend in the wire. Now it doesn't make it any harder, but you do want to be very, very gentle. So we're going to place, I'm going to lift you up just a little bit. Okay. We're going to place our component back on the tool, right? Do not squeeze. Like I am barely barely holding on because if I squeeze these pliers even just a little bit I'm gonna mess up that bend in the wire so just be gentle like I'm talking as gentle as you possibly can and still hold the piece steady guide the wire I'm going really slow I don't want to squeeze okay it's tricky. It's tricky because your inclination to hold everything steady is to squeeze the pliers handles, right? 
but don't do it. Resist the urge because if you do, you're going to, you're going to mess up the entire piece and you'll have to start over again. Cause once you, you distort that bend in the center, there's no getting it back. All right. So very, very gentle, right? Slide that off of there and there you go. Okay. So now we have a loop that's going to hang right in the center with that bend. Just be careful, please, please, please. <laughs> Nicole says, this is the part where the sentence enhancers are going to flow like lava. Exactly. Cause if you accidentally squeeze and it's so hard to fight the urge to squeeze, cause that's how you want to stabilize the component in the tool. But, oh man, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. That's the one loop where you don't want to squeeze. All right, so now we're ready to make three more of our little loops. So now we can proceed as normal. We're just gonna put it back on the tool, holding it. Now it doesn't matter if I squeeze and I'm gonna go around, use that barrel of those pliers to make our little, whoops, our little loop. I like to hold it on the tool as I continue to do the wire wraps. I just feel like I've got a little bit more control over everything. Okay, so all the way around three times, coming back up for that fourth. But now I'm going to slide this off. Will the loop be a different size due to not holding tight? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, it's It might be a little bit bigger, but not enough to really make that big of a difference. Once you get the beads on here, the size of your loops really kind of disappears. So that's also a really good... Um, kind of give yourself a break situation. If your loops are not perfect and they're not consistent, when you put all the beads on here, a lot of that's a lot of the things that are going to drive you crazy about it if you're a perfectionist are really going to kind of fade to the background. So one of the things being the size of your loops, if a couple of your loops are a little bit smaller or bigger, nobody's going to notice once the beads are on there. It's a nice, nice way to camouflage. All right. So again, going around, we've got two more loops to go. Okay. Okay, so I've made this one. I got all the wraps ready to go. Okay. Sorry, I had to drop that for a second. I have an itch. It required both hands. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, we've got one more loop to make. So putting the tool, we're putting a component back on the tool. Guide the wire up and around the barrel of the pliers. And then wrap around again. You guys, Albert is breathing so heavy in the background. He's missed you guys too. He's in a cone of shame. <laughs> Albert's in the cone of shame because he will not stop chewing on his hot spots. So he's wearing the cone of shame. He's not happy about it either. All right. Now check it out. Our loops. Our loops look so good. I'm going to kind of guide the wire to the back of our component here. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim off. Laurie says, poor Albert. I know. I know. But he just keeps chewing on himself. He gets the he gets the doggy Benadryl, but it's just not enough because he weighs a hundred pounds. It takes a lot of Benadryl. And if I give him that much doggy Benadryl, then he's just like he just sleeps all the time. <laughs> I don't I don't like that. I don't like feeling like I'm drugging my dog, right? I just want his skin to heal so he'll stop. It's just his fall allergies. They're very early this year. I don't know why. Okay. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, there are our loops on our component. Now let's just take another look, right? I just like to compare the two because I just feel like this new, this new design is better. I just feel like it's better, right? I know it's bigger, but you can make it smaller. You don't have to. And Susie says, poor little guy, he is certainly not little, but yes. <laughs> Can you use cortisone on dogs? You know what? I don't know. I don't know. 
Oh, Nancy too. She says she has the same cone of shame. It's hot spot madness. It's that time of year. It's that time of year. Okay. So again, just kind of comparing the two. Ooh la la on this one. This one was okay until I did a better job. <laughs> No, I like this one better. Okay, so now it's time to add our beads to this, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this little row of beads first before we tackle these guys, because these are just wrapped loops. But we want to go ahead and wrap onto our component while we are at it. So I'm going to take one of these beautiful flower beads. I'm going to thread it onto a head pin, and we're going to do a wrapped loop. So I'm just going to grab the wire. Julia says dogs do very well with steroids for itching. Yeah, I, I would imagine that's ingestible and not topical. I can't put anything topical on Albert because it, he, yeah, <laughs> it's a struggle. It's a struggle, but you know how dogs are. <laughs> All right, so grabbing the wire right where it is exiting, and I'm going to bend it over the top of the chain nose pliers. So when I take the chain nose pliers away, right? There is the perfect amount of space here for my wire wraps when we get to that point. Um, I do not have to do any measuring ahead of time, which is fantastic because I don't like to do that. I like to let the tool do all the hard work for me. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers, grabbing that wire. I'm going to take it up and over the top barrel of the pliers. So I'm not moving the pliers at all. I'm just guiding the wire. So bring the wire around the top barrel of the pliers. Now I do have to move the pliers because this bottom barrel is in the way, right? I can't bring my wire over here with this in the way. So all I'm going to do is just rotate those pliers in my hand, take that bottom barrel and make it the top barrel. That makes it easy for me to go ahead and guide the wire over. And that's going to help me close up my loop, right? And I still have this nice little space in between here where I can do my wire wraps. So back on the tool, switching hands. And I'm going to use chain nose pliers to help me because these head pins are really thick. And I'm just going to wire wrap in that space between the loop and the top of our bead. Take that off. We've got ourselves a wrapped loop. I need to come in with my cutter tool. I'm going to trim off. Trim as close as you can. And if you've got any wire that is sticking out, just come in with your pliers and give it a good squeeze. And that's going to tuck it in so that it's not sticking out anymore, right? So now we've got a great little loop to hang our flower from. And I'm going to use some of these beautiful beads, these little amethyst, these faceted, they're like little pillow shaped amethyst beads. Again, guys, all the beads from this or for this project were in um's August bead box. Okay, so I've got four beads. I'm going to do two and my flower and then two. And we're going to do those right here kind of towards the top. I'm going to grab another piece of 24 gauge wire. It doesn't take a lot for this, maybe like four inches. It's probably a little, a little more than what we need. But same thing as when we get started with anything. I want to anchor the wire to the component. So I'm just going to lay it across the component. Take the tail and wire wrap it to the component. Yes, it's going to slip slide around. Hi, Lorena. I'm so happy to see you. Okay, so, and you can see my initial wrap is like way out in la la land. I'm just going to bring that right on back in where it needs to be. Line it all up with my pliers. Okay. And then I am going to kind of smooth that wire back out in case I made any, any bends in it. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. How do I tuck my wire without distorting the wrap, says Linda. So you just want to be really, really careful. Uh, my, probably my biggest, my biggest um, hint for this is to have a pair of chain nose pliers where the tip on them is really tiny. See how little my, of course, my tools are little in general because they're um, the sparkle pliers from Beetle on. They're very, very slim. The handles are really slim because I have pretty small hands. So any of those ergonomic handles, the big bulky ones, I have a really hard time using those. But because I use a slim line plier, the tip of my chain nose pliers is also very, very tiny. And uh, they do make them smaller. But 
these are really, really small. So I can really get in there and I just, just put my pliers on either side of that bottom wrap and make sure that the tip of my plier is as close to the tip of the wire where it was cut as possible and just give it a little bit of a squeeze. Now, something that's gonna make a difference is going to be the size or the gauge of the wire that you're using. So if you're using a really thin gauge wire, if you're using um, a head pin that's a 24 gauge wire, you're using 24 gauge wire where you've made your own head pin, be gentle when you're squeezing it because it will distort all of the wire. You know, it'll distort the wire wraps and everything if you're not being super, super careful. So a thicker gauge wire is not going to, um, you're not going to have to worry nearly as much. But I just try to get my pliers down in there as close as I possibly can and just give it a little squeeze. I don't do a lot of like super strong squeezing. It's just a very gentle, small movements and hopefully that will help. Okay. Wanda says, I love my Zuron needle nose pliers, right? They're so good because they've got that tiny little tip on them. Really, really like them. Okay. So now we're going to thread our beads on. So we're going to thread on two of these beautiful amethyst beads and we're going to thread on the loop to the top of our flower and our two amethyst beads. Whoops, if I can find the, there we go. Janelda says she uses her sparkle pliers all the time. They're my favorite. Yeah, no hulks drinks squeezing. All right, so now we want to wire wrap to the other side but we got a couple little things we got to do we got to determine first and foremost where we want these beads to fall within the component right do we want them to be way down here i don't i want mine to be up here closer to the top but i also want to give my wire a little bit of a drape so i'm just going to kind of gently push the wire down where i want that drape to be right, where it is sitting even between the two sides of the component. You really can, because it's this thin gauge wire, you really can kind of determine how much of a drape you want, where you want it placed. But more than anything, I want it to be evenly spaced. So I don't want there to be a ton of wiggle room here, right? I want one bead to meet with one side and one bead to meet with the other side. And then as I'm holding everything in place, I'm gonna come in and start my wire wrapping. Now you do have to be a little careful Right, because even though we work hardened, it still can be um, it still can be mushed. So just be careful. I get one good wire wrap in there just to hold everything in place. Now I can really kind of look at it with my fingers out of the way, make sure that the drape that I have created in the wire is exactly what I want it to be, and the placement is where I want it to be before I commit. I'm going to squeeze my two wraps together, and now I'm going to commit by doing the finished few wire wraps okay so I'm gonna do about four wraps squeeze those together with my pliers I want to trim that wire on the back of the component yeah no mushing no mushing okay and then the same on the other side I'm gonna come and trim off the tail Okay. Now, if you are still concerned that this is going to wiggle around too much on you, you can come in with your chain nose pliers and very gently just bite down on those wire wraps. And again, don't want to, you know, don't want to be crazy with it. You don't be, don't snap at it because you'll, you'll mark up the surface of the wires, but just giving those wraps a gentle squeeze will help to tighten them up against the surface of the component and keep them from, from wiggling around. It's really going to kind of keep them right in place, right? So there is our little drape for the center. And now we're ready to do our beads on the bottom. Okay. So for the beads on the bottom, I'm just going to use head pins. If you guys want to make your own head pins, you can do that. If you want to do head pins and then jump rings, you can. But for these, I actually wire wrap them directly to the component. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to be gentle, right? Because we don't want to distort anything as we go. We're going to do one at a time. So I'm going to thread on a bead. Coming in with my chain nose pliers, we're just going to follow the steps just like we would to make a regular wrapped loop. But before we do the wraps, we're gonna slide this on to one of the loops on the component. So up and over, rotate the pliers, take the wire over to the other side. Now to make this process a little bit easier, 
I like to take my loop and open it just slightly, just slightly. Okay. Now bring it to the component, take the tail end of the wire, slide it through, and then those two will slide together. Okay. Close that loop back up. I like to use my bent chain nose pliers to hold on to the loop to keep it closed right to keep it closed and to keep from distorting the shape of it so i hold it flat and then i come in with my chain nose pliers and a wire wrap okay now you can see we didn't need any jump rings we just wire wrap directly to our component going to come in. Oh yeah. You could turn this into a Christmas ornament. You could make this a pendant instead of earrings. This is kind of big for an earring and it just got bigger when I changed, <laughs> when I changed the component design, it got a little bit bigger. See, just tucking in that wire because it was sticking out a little bit. Um, if that, <clears throat> if you did this in some Christmas colors, oh yeah. A bunch of these on your tree or making them really big for your tree. Mm -hmm. I'm all, I'm ready. I'm ready. Who's ready for Christmas? <laughs> I'm just ready for this year to be over in general. All right. So another one, we're going to start our wraps loop. <clears throat> okay. Round those pliers. Joan just got a package in the mail. Joan, what goodies did you get? My mail hasn't ran yet. I'm kind of mad at my, um, my, my mail person at the moment. Okay. All right. Now, so that my beads are not super crowded, I'm going to skip a loop. We're going to go to the next loop. I'm just mad at USPS in general, but I'm particularly angry with my mail person who all of a sudden has decided not to come and pick up my packages anymore. I don't know why, but so I'm having to drop off packages or enlist friends to drop off packages for me. Okay, there's my wrap loop. Ooh, Joan says it's from Silver Silk. Okay, gonna come in, tuck down anything that's sticking out. All right. Now I am gonna do, so we skipped a loop here, but I'm not gonna skip one here because I definitely want a, um, a bead hanging in the center here. <laughs> Nicole got her, um, <laughs> Kathy says, friends don't mind. <laughs> I appreciate it so, so much. Um, Nicole got her bargain bead box and it is, I agree. It's so, it's, but the, yeah, it's one of my favorites. So in love with the color palette. I think I'm going to use it next. Um, I think I'm going to use it next week for our live to do a project with. All right. So taking the wire, putting those two together. That may be the case, Peggy, but you would think they would send you notice, right? Because I have a USPS account. You would think they would send you um, notice and let you know that, like, they can't. Because that way, I don't just leave my packages sitting out there and thinking is that my, my mail person is just an idiot. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Two more beads, and then we're ready to add our ear wire to this and call it done. So, All right. <laughs> Hey, look, there's me. <laughs> Who's on here is me today. It's funny because I already saw Joan and I already saw Kathy, but yet there I am. <laughs> All right, up and over. Okay, just open it up just a little bit. Just helps. You don't always have to open that loop up, but when you're using really thick uh, head pins like I'm using, I don't, I don't want to force this thick wire up against that 24 gauge wire to snap them together because I'm just afraid that it's going to distort the shape. So that's why I open it. But I don't always do that. Just when necessary, right? Only when necessary. Because a lot of times your two wires will slide together. It's very gratifying <laughs> when they snap together, but it's not always the case. Sometimes it's a power struggle. 
All right, see that little tip sticking up? I'm going to come in with my pliers and just barely squeeze that down so it's not sticking out. No, it wasn't sticking out much, but it doesn't take much to get caught in your hair or your clothing and really just destroy your earring and your sweater. So... <laughs> oh my gosh okay joan and kathy are here colleen's on on youtube so who who's me <laughs> who's being me today i'm serious like how is that happening <laughs> that's funny all right opening up and we're gonna add our last bead okay and then we will Add our ear wire to this. And I'll tell you a little something about that. Since we made a change in this, what it kind of opened up. Another little possibility that it opened up for this design. So I'll tell you about that here in just a second. <laughs> Kathy says, oh, wait, it's me. <laughs> That's too funny. Okay. And then just barely get in there. Okay. And that's it. That's it. We're going to add our ear wire. Let's do that real quick. And then we'll talk about the difference between the two and what this one makes possible, which is possible with the other one too, but this one makes it a whole lot easier. Okay. First of all, that's beautiful. Can I just say, it reminds me of like a peacock feather. If this had some blues and greens in it too. Oh yeah. That'd be so pretty, but I really, <laughs> I really do love the purple. I don't do a lot of purple, so it was cool to uh, use a color that I don't normally design with. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at the first component, okay? So the first component, of course, you can see the differences in the two um, and why it is that I picked this one over the two. But I wanted to show you what makes, a, what you have a whole nother opportunity for something because you guys know I love dangles. But you, because there's a jump ring right here, you have the opportunity to hang something from here. So if you wanted to take this little section and move it down here and then hang something right here from the jump ring, you totally could. Or you could take this part out altogether and just hang something a little bit bigger right here in the center. Whereas with this design, you don't have that loop. Yes, you could wire wrap yourself a little loop like one of these right here underneath your wire wraps. You absolutely could do that if you wanted to. And that's, that's totally fine. But I feel like this is just an easier option. Jump rings are so handy. Like, I'm serious. What would we do without jump rings? They make life so much easier. <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely a fan of the change that I made in this design. My only wish is that uh, the original picture for this was uh, this instead of these. And I only have one of these now. So I have to take this apart and make a new earring, which I may or may not actually do. <laughs> I don't know. I might put these in the shop. So if that's the case, I will make a second. I'll make a second one so that I actually have the set. I'm going to turn you guys around and try this on for you so you can see what it looks like on because they do look different in the ear than they do laying down. Okay, so let me turn you around back to our front camera view here. Hello. <laughs> All right, so look how pretty. So pretty. So, so pretty. Now those are some pretty earrings and I don't even do purple. So pretty. Those turned out really, really well. I like the change that I made in this so much more. This is an okay design. There's nothing wrong with this design, but if you are a perfectionist, which I tend to be, I want my earrings to be as close of a match as possible. And with this design, it was a little bit harder to get those, those components to be consistent. I really struggled. One of them looked a little off compared to the other one. Whereas with these, I know that I can get two earrings that look almost identical if I follow that formula by using, with this one, I didn't use an actual measurement, right? I just cut a length of wire, made the component. With this one, I used a five inch piece of wire. I laid it down on the ruler. It made all the difference in the world, right? So just little things like that might make a difference. And it doesn't have to just be a design like this. If you're struggling with making a component, maybe 
free forming it, free handing it is not always the option. Yes, it can be fun to make loops and designs and freehand a lot of things, but sometimes, I can't believe I'm saying this, sometimes it pays to bring your ruler into the situation, right? And it pays to kind of change up your connections and things. Whereas with the wire wraps, I kind of had to eyeball it to make sure that the wire wraps were centered. With two loops connected by a jump ring, I don't have to eyeball that because I know I can squeeze it one way or another to make it look exact, right? So there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not big on numbers, but man, ruler makes a difference. So ruler wins this design. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's see. Peggy says, Sharon has a question. Let me roll back up here and see if I can find it. How do you know where to start your wire wrap? So Sharon, when it comes to wire wrapping on your components like this, your wire wraps can literally be anywhere on the component because it's going to slide around. That gives you kind of an opportunity to get it anchored and you don't have to commit to that exact spot. Um, the only time you want to commit to it is once you've made it halfway, right? And then you can line everything up, make your mirror image of everything on the other side. That's when you want to kind of set everything in its exact spot. But when you're working on a curved component, right? Or even on a flat component, but when you're working on a curved component in particular, your first three or four wire wraps, they're going to slide back and forth, which is a good thing. Don't get frustrated with that. That's a good thing because it means you can really kind of shift everything to place it exactly where you want it to go right all right all right those are fabulous i must say <laughs> i took a design i wasn't super thrilled about and and made it made it into one that i definitely i definitely like so i hope you guys enjoyed as well um let's see i missed you a lot too shelly Wanda said I would need Sarah to come to my hall of justice and do my eyeliner. I cannot. Lots of practice. Lots of practice. But I would gladly. I have a really hard time doing it on another person. But <laughs> Oh, goodness. I'm so glad that you guys have enjoyed this project. Thanks for joining me. Even if you didn't like the project, I'm just glad that you came to hang out with me because I have missed you guys so, so much. I'm so happy to be back. It feels good to be back in the groove. So that being said, everybody who is part of the hardwired group, First of all, we have 15 new members. I'm so excited to get together with all of you today at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So um, anybody in the hardwired group, get ready for that. We've got another fun project today at 5 p.m. For the rest of you guys, I will be seeing you on Friday. I'm already working on kits. They are fabulous. Like I just kind of have my creative spirit back a week off though it was stressful, I, I think it kind of recharged my creative side. So um, I'm looking forward to showing you. I've already got three kits ready and I'm working on more. So can't wait to see you again on Friday. If you need me in between, you can always reach out to me or someone in my team and they can get in touch with me if I, I tend to be really hard to uh, I just I, messages are hard for me. <laughs> But yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, everybody. It's so good to see you guys. I will see you guys again on Friday. I can't wait to see you again. In the meantime, post your pictures in the community pages so we can see and be inspired by all of the great things that you guys are making. I love you guys. I will see you guys again soon. Bye, guys. Cooper says bye, too. <laughs>